Retrospect 7 for Windows is a very powerful backup product. It allows you to not only protect your local computer, but it allows you to protect an entire network of computers. In this demonstration, we're going to show you some of the basic functionality of Retrospect so that you can get an idea of how easy it is to actually use the software. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at backup. And typically, Retrospect will bring up a backup wizard. And the backup wizard asks you a series of very simple questions. What do you want to back up or what do you want to protect? It'll ask you the kinds of files you want to protect. And then it'll ask you where you want to save that backup. Retrospect can save backup data to external hard drives or to optical drives or to even a tape drive or a network storage device like a NAS device. In this example, we're going to look, go ahead and close the wizard so you can see how quickly and easily you can configure Retrospect even in advanced mode. Just by going to backup, and I switch to advanced mode, the first thing I do is I pick the source. So I tell Retrospect what I want to back up. I can choose my C drive, or I can pick other computers on my network. In this example, we're going to use the C drive. And if I don't want to use the entire C drive, all I have to do is click subvolume, and then I can pick a simple folder on the drive, define it as a subvolume, and make that the entire source instead of the entire C drive. I click OK. I go to destination. And then Retrospect brings up another wizard if I don't already have an existing destination. And as you can see, I can pick different backup types. I can do tape, disk, removable disk, optical, and file. In this example, we're going to go ahead and we're going to select disk as our backup type, since that seems to be the most common choice that most people are using these days. We're going to go ahead and select disk, and then we click next, and then we have to give our backup a name. The default name is backup set A. Then you actually go through and you pick the disk you want the backup to go on to. We go ahead and we select the disk, and then we just click OK. And then we go ahead and we choose Next. Retrospect then gives us a choice of the type of security. Do we want to do password only? Do we want to do AES encryption? In this example, we're not going to use any encryption. And then we click Next and then Next, and then Finish. We then select the backup that we created, and then Retrospect gives us a summary. We have, we're selecting the driver's folder, our destination is backup set A. In this case, we're going to do all files except cache files, but I can change that if I want to. I can do all files, I can do documents only, movies, music, I have a lot of different choices. And then if I click Preview, Retrospect will show us the contents of that directory and allow us to actually pick and choose the items just by clicking and selecting what we want to back up. And then we just click Backup and then Retrospect will go ahead and begin copying the data. After Retrospect copies all the files, it will then go back and do a byte-by-byte -byte verification to make sure the data was copied correctly. If you choose to turn off the verification features, Retrospect can do an MD5 digest verification at a later date. Whenever you do a backup with Retrospect, the very first time it copies every single file. After that, it's going to copy only the files that are new or changed since the previous backup. This makes Retrospect pretty powerful because it reduces the total amount of time it's going to take for each backup operation, but it also saves you on storage space for future backups. Once the backup completes, then Retrospect will show you a history under the History tab. As you can see under the History tab, there's prior backups listed, and in each side, each prior backup, it gives you detailed information about what happened during those backup operations. We also have a proactive tab for the Retrospect's proactive backup, which is used for dynamically backing up laptops on a network. We can see previous schedules. We can see backups that are waiting. 
and then obviously we can see backups that are currently running. When I click on backup, Retrospect remembers what I did previously. If I want to set up a schedule with Retrospect, that's very simple. I just click on the schedule button down here. I can call this my scheduled backups. Click OK. And then Retrospect will copy over the information from the immediate backup operation. It shows us our source, our destination, and we can change the source. If I want to, I can add additional machines. So maybe I'll pick a couple of machines on the network. Click OK. Click OK. And now when this script runs, Retrospect will back up each of these machines one after another. If I go to Schedule, I click on Add, I select Day of Week, and then I can pick the days of the week that I actually want this backup schedule to run on. By putting a 1 here, it means it's going to run that backup every week. If I put a 2 here, every other week, and if I put a 3, it means it'll run once every three weeks on each of those days. Retrospect can also do a normal backup where it copies only the newer changed items. It can do a recycle backup where it erases everything and starts over again. I can also configure Retrospect to use multiple destinations. So if I select Add and I select Create New, in this case let's choose Tape, and we can call this one Monday. And as you can see here, Retrospect supports hardware compression and worm tapes for your tape drive. We're going to tell it we want to create new backup sets. We're going to click on Next, and we can have a separate backup set for each day of the week. Then we click Next. We're not going to use any encryption. We click Finish. We select all of the days of the week that we just created for our backups. We're going to go ahead and remove the original one. And now I've configured Retrospect to back up these sources to these varying destinations. If I want to set up a schedule for that, it's a very simple process. I click Add, Day of Week, uh, Monday. I tell Retrospect to use the Monday destination. I click Add. Tuesday, I choose the Tuesday destination, add, Wednesday, and so on. Oop, looks like we made a modification, made a change there, Wednesday, Wednesday, and we change this down here to Wednesday. Very simple to set up, very simple to make changes. So we've now configured Retrospect to use Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, if I want to, I can go back to Schedule, Add, Thursday, Thursday, Add, and we'll do Friday real quick. So in just a matter of a couple minutes, we've configured Retrospect to run scheduled backups every single day of the week to a rotating set of media. So we have Monday running on Monday, Tuesday running on Tuesday, and so on. So every night at 10 p.m., Retrospect will then write its backup data to the appropriate tape. If I have a tape library, Retrospect will automatically look in the tape library and pick the appropriate tape from the library and then backup using that piece of media. 